Hey Facebook, Steve Woody here and welcome to episode 11 of Midday Mastery and today I'm going to be talking about strategy. So I'm going to do a slightly different take on these Facebook Lives now. I'm going to cap them to 15 minutes and so I'm actually going to start a timer now. Uh, I'm going to keep them to 15 minutes. The reason I'm going to do that is so that you can take away some information that's relevant for you. I'm not going to waffle too much. Uh, if you've got any questions, please fire them across. But today I'm going to talk about strategy. And the reason I'm going to do it is because for the next sort of 10 weeks or so, I'm going to like read your bedtime story. The idea behind this is I want to spend the next 10 weeks going through my book. So I'm going to do a chapter a week and we're going to talk about it. So everything that is in chapter one of my book, by the way, can you hear me all right? Because I'm using a lapel mic today. Just let me know if you can hear me okay, if it's clear. Because I thought it would be better than just going through the normal um, iPhone. So yeah. Chapter one in my book is all about strategy, and so I just want to cover with you, I'm not going to read it, but I do want to just sort of touch on it so that you can get an idea depending on where you are. Speak louder! Don't. Don't. (laughs) So yeah, any questions you've got, let me know. But chapter one, I talk about strategy and the importance of strategy and why you need it, specifically online. More so now than ever before because... There are so many people out there who are just throwing up websites and throwing up businesses. They're not even a business, they're just throwing up this idea. They're like, ah, I want to make money, how can I do it? I'll get involved in network marketing, I'll I'll do what everyone else is doing, I'll I'll, I'll just get myself out there, or I'll go to this seminar, I'll go to this event, and I'll consume all this information, and I'll just copy what they're doing. And the challenge is that, yeah, you can get all of these strategies, and it's good, but if you're not adopting your own strategy, if you're copying someone else's, then you can only go so far. You can only do what they're doing. You can't actually do what you're doing. So you need your own strategy. So you model and you take what works from other people. You apply it to yourself. And then you create your own version, your own spin on the world, your own thing. Depending on whatever it is you're passionate about, whatever your niche is, whatever you're good at. You know, it doesn't have to be your purpose or your life purpose. When I created Online Mastery, it's not because I wanted to build websites for the rest of my life. It was because I needed money and this was to give me options. In fact, a lot of the reason that I've hated it for so long is because I didn't want to do it. It's only now, like four, four years into my company, and it's only now in the last six months that I've rebranded, and it's only now in the last month or two that I've found my flow. Like now, I know what I want to do. I know where I'm happy. I know where I'm best. And so this, for me, it's taken me all of this time to get here, if that makes sense. I know if he pulls his trousers down when I speak, I can tease him too, Gillette. Got to run, have fun. Anik, I love you, darling. Have an amazing day and I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, so I, I tend to do that. Me and Anik do a bit of filming together. We're doing some events uh, later on in the year. And whenever we're doing our video trailers or whenever we're recording, um, I, I tend to waddle around with my trousers down just to wind her off and put her off. Because she likes to do everything perfectly first take. And, and, and she's very good, but I just like to disrupt her a little bit. So pretty much what she's just done to me here. So yeah, getting back to my point of you need your own strategy. It's got to be yours. It's got to be what works for you. So the first thing that I do, the first thing that I cover in the book is I go through who are you. And what I mean by that is who are you as a person? What resonates with you? Because for the last few years, like I mentioned, I did what I needed to do to get by to earn money so that I wasn't, and and, you know, it's been up and down. Like I've earned money and I've lost money. It's, It's been a journey. But in that, I've now discovered who I am and what it is that I want to do. So you do not need to find your life purpose straight away. You do not need to find what it is you want to do the rest of your life. If you don't know the answer to that question, then that's absolutely fine. Just do something that's going to give you options. Do something that's going to pay the bills. Do something that's going to give you the ability to get to where you need to be. Because you're going to have a much clearer head and you're going to think a lot better when you're not stressing about the bills and worrying about the money and when you're not you know, coming from that place of desperation or lack or scarcity. So who you are, that's absolutely fine, figuring out who you are, but you don't need to do that right now. What you need to do now is just put something in place that will take you to the next step, that's all. So when I talk about who you are, ideally, you don't just want a job. You don't just want to be doing something for the sake of doing it. You actually want to be doing something because it's going to fire you up, you know. There there are going to be shit days. There are going to be days you don't... Like, I mean, God, I had it the other day. I was at an event on Saturday. I was meant to be there in the morning. I had a wobble. I just did not want to get out of bed. 
I was dragging myself around the house just trying to motivate myself because I'm human and I have bad days. And so the only thing that got me to that event, apart from the fact that I didn't want to let my friends down, was I want to take myself to the next level and I know that this is a way to do it. I know that learning to speak on stage and learning how to sell effectively from stage is a skill that I need to master because it's something I'm not very good at. And so I'm great on stage and I'm phenomenal when I get up on stage and I do my thing, but I, there's no structure to it. I just get up and I just do my thing. I just share my experiences. There's no sales uh, pattern. There's nothing there. And I don't want to get into that sort of douchebag marketer place. I don't want to be like that, but I do want to make sure that I sell. So I went to Pony Express, I went to Anique's event and I was with Elliot and Anique and you know Rachel Bird, there was a load of amazing people there and also all the people that were in the room as well. I connected with like-minded people, I got to speak to a good friend Jason, I got to speak to Kel and a load of other amazing people that were there, met some potential new clients which was amazing as well and I, I got out. And so it's kind of, it's doing that sometimes, it's like doing what you need to do so that you can do what you want to do. I had to do that because I needed to do it. I didn't necessarily want to do it. But, you know, knowing who you are, you don't need to know the answer to that. Not right away. So it's worth looking and asking that question, taking a moment and saying, you know, what do I want to do? Is it possible? Is there the ability for me to add value in whatever it is that I want to do? Because I'm not being funny. If you want to pick flowers all day, that's great. But the chances are you're going to make a lot of money going out and picking flowers. You know, you need to understand that if you need to earn money to live, do you need a job and then who you are and what you do is your passion or is there a way for you to make money from your passion? That's the first thing you need to do. You need to understand, you know, what it is you're doing. But then the second part I talk about is what is your business? Okay, you need to understand what is your business? Because like at the end of the day, business is business, right? Business is there for you to earn money and your purpose and your passion and your why and who you are and what you're doing, I respect that. You know, for you, whatever that is, that's absolutely fine. But your business needs to earn money. That's it. Bottom line, profit. That's it. Because if it's not, it's not a business, it's a hobby. And whatever you're doing is absolutely fine, but you need to understand the difference between the two. What you do for fun and what you do for finance can be two totally different. I don't have to be the same thing. If they are, if you can align the two, so what you do to earn money is fun and you enjoy it, then even better, right? Because it's going to drag you out of bed on those days that you just don't want to do it. So if you can align them, great, but I know too many people that get stressed out and too many people that hold themselves back because they're worried about the fear of, oh, but I'm not doing what I'm meant to do. This isn't my life's mission. I'm wasting. Like people worry about wasting time. They waste time worrying about wasting time. I'm going around in a circle. It's absolutely mental. So you need to understand your business. And look, this picture here, this is the most simplistic way I can tell you. Uh, there we go. Value. Somebody before who's unhappy because they've got a problem. Somebody after because you've added value. Your value is how you solve their problem. And the way that you understand, that you get them to understand that you, you've got empathy and you know their problem is that you can identify the pain of that problem when you can identify the pain of that. I know I'm repeating myself, I know I've talked about this before, and I'm gonna keep repeating it until it's like drilled in and you're like, oh my God, shit, I get it. Because this stuff is simple, I, like, I don't need to reinvent the wheel, I don't need to give you a thousand different ways to skin a cat, so to speak. It's like simple things, do these simple things and it works. Like I'm learning that now. I've tried to be too clever for too long and I'm going back to simplicity now. So, this is the one I love. It was a quote from Woody Gumphrey. It's, any fool can make something complicated. It takes a genius to make it simple. Mohammed, you should make this into an audiobook podcast. I need this for my drive to Birmingham. Well, this is an audiobook. You can get it. And if you go to onlinemastery.co.uk forward slash podcast, then you can listen to my podcast. Once a week, every Sunday, I update that. So yes, this is totally audible for you as well. And I'll be uploading it to my YouTube channel straight after this. So look, I've got you covered, man. However you want to listen to this. If you want to listen to me right, rather than Justin Bieber in the car, I totally respect that. And, you know, hopefully it helps. So thank you. Next thing I'm going to cover, because I'm running out of time, I've said I'm going to go sort of 15 minutes. But who is your target audience? Once you know who you are, once you've got an idea of what business you're creating, you need to know who the fuck are you selling to? If you've got somebody with a problem, who are they? Who are they? Where are they? What's their problem? 
Uh, what's their pain? I mean, customer avatar. You know, I've gone over and over and over this. This is one of the most important things I go through. When I start my six week course on the 1st of March, the very first thing we're gonna do when we look at what is your business, that the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start there because respectfully, who, who you are, I can't change that. that you gotta figure that one out on your own. But what is your business? Well, that's the first thing we're gonna look at. First thing we're gonna look at is what are the numbers? What do you need to earn a month? What is your business need to earn a month? What are you selling and how many of it do you need to sell to be able to effectively get where you need to be? That's the thing that I'm gonna be doing. That's the business. We look at the maths. It's simple maths. How many people do you convert when you've got an ad? How many people click through from the ad? How many people convert into an opt-in? How many people convert into a sales page? How many people convert into a customer? Low ticket item, middle ticket item, high ticket item. It's like, it's, it's simple stuff. It's maths. Once you know the numbers, how many people do you need to earn the money you need to earn? It's simple maths. Take all the emotion, take all the, everything out of it. It's just pure logic. Once you understand that and you know who your target audience is, you can start to create your content. You can start to work out what it is you're gonna to say to them, how you're gonna add value. When you know your potential customer better than they know themselves, then you can go in and say, do you know what? Here's a brick wall, you're about to run into it, let me stop you. Rather than hurting yourself, how about if you do A, B, and C? Oh, you can see that you've avoided that brick wall. Well, by the way, here's three more. If you don't wanna if you don't wanna run into them, then this is what you need to do. First, you need to pay me some money, and then I'm gonna take you through it. In fact, that's it. It doesn't need to be any more complicated like that. And that affects every single area of every single person's life. There is always something that's gonna hurt someone and there is always someone that can help them avoid that pain. And you just need to figure out where you fit into that model of their world. That's all it is. Juliet, doing your avatar today, I love it. I cannot wait to see it. I am looking forward to it. I'm gonna to continue to kick your ass to make sure you do this because like, Juliet is one of these amazing women who she has been to so many events, so many seminars, and she's done so much. She's paralyzed by information. And so now she needs to take action. So the fact that you're doing that today, I love and respect you for that, and I cannot wait to see it. And in fact, if you go to onlinemastery.co.uk forward slash customer hyphen avatar, I've got a webinar, I've got an infographic, I've got a blog, I've got videos, I've got everything that you need to help you create your customer avatar. It's all there. Everything's done, because guess what? What I'm teaching you to do, I'm fucking doing myself. Systematizing the shit out of myself so you can go and do that and you've got all of that information there to help you so I can sit here and talk to you on the Facebook Live instead. And then I can focus on the other things I need to focus on because I've created it, I've recorded it, it's there, it's done. So all of that stuff that you need for the customer avatar, for your target audience, it's all there. Next step, once we go through this, because there's a few pages here, in fact, there's a really good quote here. This is actually a really good quote. So. This is from um, Alison Rapp, my ex-mother-in-law, who I, I really do respect this quote. I really do respect her. She's an amazing woman. I mean, you know, I, 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 can't, uh, I can't take away the fact that she has taught me a lot. And one of the things she says is, if you don't have the clients you want, it's because you're too busy attracting the ones you already have. Now, one of the things that I say a lot is, there is something worse than having no customers. If you think, oh, I've got no clients, I've got no customers, I've got no money, that is not a bad place to be because all you need to do is go out and find customers and clients and earn money. However, the thing that is worse than having no clients is having the wrong clients. If you have the wrong client, then that is good. that's like a terrorist in your organization. That can actually destroy your business. You can end up going crazy. You can end up losing time, losing money. You can end up losing your business because of it. I've seen it happen. So something worse than having no customers, because if you're at no customers, you're at ground zero. But if you've got the wrong customers, then you've got to get rid of them. You've got to invest time, energy, and money into them. There's a chance they're going to damage your brand. There's so many things that can happen and go wrong there. So be careful. You know, when I was talking to Anique and we sat down and discussed about the people that were in the room at her event, we realized that the problem that we've got is, and it's the same for me, me and Anique have got the same problem. We've been so busy targeting startups that by the time we come to actually coach people with products and services, like, do we actually want to take people through that whole startup process? The reality is we don't. So I'm actually looking at people now, and I've been connecting with people that can take you through product creation, that can take you through startup phase, that can get you to that stage, so you can actually have a product and service and come to me and I can just get you to the next level. And so that's where we're starting to figure things out. And so it's okay, you know, you learn as you go along. We've learned, we started with entrepreneur startups, now it's like actually, we just wanna work with business owners. 
We just want to work with people that want to make money. We just want to get people to the next level because that's what we do best. So it's worth understanding that, knowing where you are. This brings me on to my next question. Uh, and I'm actually running out of time because I'm 15 minutes. Do you know what? I'm going to give a bonus five just for today. Exit strategy. What is your exit strategy? I've always said this, and this is one of the things that I like, is you're going to leave your business. One way or another, whether you want to or not, you are going to exit your business. It's either going to be on your way to the airport because you've made millions and you're about to get on your private jet, or it's going to be in a coffin. One way or another, you're going to exit your business, so it makes sense to plan now so that you can work on your business and not in it. You shouldn't be part of the everyday thing. You should be doing what you do best. You should be delivering value. That's what you should be doing. And you should have systems in place to take care of everything else. Because God forbid, if something goes wrong, if you're in hospital for two weeks, if you get hit by a car, if you find out you've got to go in for chemotherapy, if you find out that you've just got man flu, you know, any of the things that happen, I know like man flu and chemotherapy are a totally different level, I get that. But my, 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 my point is that if something happens to you and it's unforeseen, because obviously that, you know, you can't expect it. Can your business still survive? Can you still earn money? Will, will you still be able to have people working for you and with you? Because the reality is if you're the person who is involved in your business to a point where without it you can't survive, that's not a sustainable business model. You know, if I, for some reason, cannot take on a cohort and cannot work with people, I've still got my products, I've still got my book, I've still got my courses, I've still got my webinars, I've still got people buying my things, I've still got monthly revenue coming in through affiliate programs, I've still got hosting, I've still got stuff out there making me money. So even if I can't actually take people on and work one-on-one with them, then I still have things in place because I planned out my exit, because I will leave this company one day. And when I do and I go to do other things, I want to make sure that someone else can fit into my place. So what is your exit strategy? Something else to consider. What is your time frame? This is like so many people say, oh, I want it yesterday. Be realistic. You're not going to get it yesterday. And if like there's a really good um, image that I had created. By the way, Mahit, who done all my graphics for my book, I think he's phenomenal. I'm going to give him a a shout out. Mahit's a great guy. This graphic, right? You may have seen it before. Whoa. You can have it fast, cheap, or great. Pick two of the three. You're not having them all. Fast, cheap, or great. So when I talk about time frame, if you want it fast, then it's either going to be cheap and fast or it's going to be great and fast. But if it's great and fast, it's going to cost you. And if it's cheap and fast, it's not going to be great. It's as simple as that. So when you look and you consider what is your ex, uh, sorry, what is your time frame, there's three things to think about here. One is your pre-launch. All the things that you need to do up until your launch. Now, if you are a startup, if you have a new product, then you should be looking. Once you have your branding out there, once you've taken your time to create that or get that to a stage where you can present yourself, you should be creating what is called an MVP. Stands for Minimum Viable Product. Do just enough to get yourself out there to test it to see if it works. There is no point investing two years of your life creating a product that you put to market and no one wants. It is a waste. You need to know that the marketplace will buy whatever it is you're selling. And the only way you can do that is to get something out there in its basic form and then build it, reinvent it, change it, upgrade it, do whatever you need to do after that. You need to add enough value to see a result. You do not need to be an expert or a genius. You do not need to be a rocket scientist. All you need to know is one thing more than the person you're selling to. And just say that again. All you need to know to add value is one more thing than the person who you're selling to. If you know something and somebody else doesn't and they need that information... And you can sell it to them to solve their problem or to stop them experiencing pain. That is, You don't need to be really clever here. All you need to understand is that you need to get something out there to start. Find out your audience. Find out what they want. Find out what works. And then you can create. And then you can add. You know, I had my book. Before I had my book, a very quick story I'll tell you here. The reason my book exists, okay, this is, this is an example of an MVP. I wanted to do an event. Okay, so I got 10 people in London to an event. I had 
No content, no structure. I had an idea in my head that I wanted to teach people how to build a website in a weekend. That was my outcome. That was my goal. Right? That was my MVP. My minimum viable product was a website in a weekend. So I went to London. We got 10 people together. They all paid me like £100 each. Hey, Amber, how you doing? They all paid me £100 each. They come to this event for two days. I had my friend Tony Snow come in. I had my, um, I had, in fact, there was, Tony talked about the design. I bought him to do that. Um, we also, like, here's the thing that I'll say. You don't have to do this on your own. If you're starting out and you're at a point where you're, you're getting out there, then you can team up with other people. There's nothing wrong with that. I got my friend Nikki Stanton. She was talking about AdWords and marketing. So all three of us spoke on the first day and I talked about strategy. Now, the first day was all about the strategy and talking about the things, pretty much what I'm going through now. The second day was the build. I realized during the second day that people were just glazing over. They were looking at me like this. And I'm like, shit, I've absolutely lost them. And I realized in that moment that they were just not retaining anything I was saying. And so I turned around in that moment, in that split second, and I said, don't worry. You don't have to remember all this. I'm going to give you a 30-day course. It's going to be an email that I'm going to send you every day for 30 days. You see how I innovated on the spot. I had my MVP, which was my two-day event. I realized that that wasn't working, and so I created a 30-day email sequence to go with it. And I'll be honest, I was writing the emails every night. I was planning it as I was going along. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You've only got to be one step ahead of the people that are buying from you. As long as you're one step ahead, that's all that matters. If you want to create a whole course, you can. Just be the step ahead. And that's the course. I mean, I'm giving you an example as a course. Obviously, if you're selling a wardrobe, you can't just create the door and then the side. You need to send them the whole lot. So, you know, if you've got physical products, of course you need to create them. All right? But if you've got digital products, then just the next step. And you need to know the outcome. The, out the outcome for me was they would have a website. All right, so then they were doing their 30-day course. They got about seven to 10 days in and they started to drop off and people stopped opening emails and I was tracking it because that's another thing you need to do. You need to know your analytics. You need, to, you need to measure and monitor. So when I was tracking the analytics and I saw people weren't opening the emails, I reached out. Oh, this has come up. Oh, that's come up. Oh, this is happening. Excuses. You know, people were getting busy. Other things were happening. And so I realized in that moment that I needed to do something different. And so what I started to do is I started to take this 30-day course that I created and I put it online and I created a 30-day course. It became the 30-day web design course and I was teaching people how to build a website in 30 days. Well, guess what? I was realizing that people were trying to build a website and didn't have a clue what to do. They didn't have the strategy to go with the build. They were trying to build something they didn't know what they were building. So I sat down and started to write a book and I went through the 10 things that people need to know to build a website. And I turned it into 10 chapters and it became a book. And then not only did I have a book, but then I decided I was going to create a workbook because I realized that the book itself is all about the things that people need to know. But the workbook is like, here's all the questions. Can you see how my minimum viable product has escalated into a book and a workbook and an online course and live events? And now I do my coaching. Can you see how I've progressed? I'm trying to get you to understand this for your business, for you, because you need to understand your pre-launch. Just get something out there because once you've got, once you get started, then you can evolve, then you can change, then you can move on from that. Guys, in 23 minutes, I've completely like gone over the 15 minutes that I wanted to do here, but I'm going to keep going because I think I'm adding value and I only wanted to do 10, 15 minutes, but do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stop until I finish this chapter because I really want you to get this. So the next thing that I've got here, and there's only two more things left, by the way, two more things to cover. The next one is, what is your budget? What is your budget? Your budget, what you're going to spend. Oh, and by the way, just to recap on that time frame, when I talk about the MVP, there's three things you should look at in your timeline. In Your timeline: your pre-launch, your launch, and your post-launch. Okay, you should have a pre-launch, a launch, and a post-launch, and you should have a time for each of them. Love the unfolding adventure. Well, look, I'm just showing you my journey. This is what I've done. This is what I've learned. This is why I'm where I am now. Okay, I'm not just one of these people that's sitting here saying, buy my shit because, you know, someone else has done something and I've modeled them. Like, I've been through this. I've learned it. I've learned from my, a lot of it is from my own mistakes. And that's what I'm trying to do is help you avoid them. So going on to what is your budget? 
When you talk about budget, one of the things you need to understand is that there are one-off costs and there are reoccurring costs. And you have to have a budget. If you say, I've got no money, then you've got no business. It's as simple as that. Just don't lie to yourself. Just accept where you are. If you need to go and get a job, go and get a job. Earn some money, come back. If you need to go and get a credit card, go and get a credit card. Get some money, come back. You know, I would much rather you spend some money on a credit card to invest in your education so that you can take action and do something than going out and buying a new handbag or a new pair of shoes or a new car stereo or something. You know, there's good debt, debt and bad debt. It's like Robert Kawasaki says in The Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You look at the cash flow quadrant. Make money work for you. There's nothing wrong with borrowing money as long as it's an investment and you can get a return on that investment. If you're creating a business, then I have nothing wrong with you going out and throwing money on a credit card as long as you learn, take action and apply. Don't just learn, learn, learn. You need to take action and apply. If you don't take action and apply, then you're going to end up with credit card debt and a load of stuff in your mind and then you're going to be even more stressed out because now you don't have the ignorance to fall back on. You're not naive anymore because you understand and it's like, shit, I know what to do, but I'm not doing it. That leads to depression. That leads to you feeling bad. I know because I've fucking been there. There's nothing worse than being in a place where you're like, I know this shit and I'm not applying it. What the fuck's wrong with me? You don't want to go to that place. So you need to understand there are some one-off costs. And it, it doesn't have to be a lot. Domain name, hosting, get a website up. I don't care if you start on Wix or Squarespace or Weebly or ClickFunnels or wherever. Just get started. You know, ideally you want to be on WordPress and there's systems you can use. And we'll go into that. Don't worry. We've got 10 weeks of this. But for now, just know that there are one-off payments. And there are reoccurring payments, your hosting fees, any SaaS products that you've got, anything that you need to use, know the difference. Know the difference between one-off payments, reoccurring payments. Marketing, you will have to invest in marketing. It doesn't have to be a lot, but you'll need some money for that. You'll need some money for branding, for design. If you're not very good at writing content, then don't write your own content. Hire a content developer to be able to do it for you. There's nothing worse than you... Like, I, I, it pains me that when I see people that say, I built my own website, and you look at it, and they've done it in MS Paint, because they're not a designer, you know, and they've written, they've drawn something kind of napkin, taken a picture of it, and put it on their website, because that's the limit of their design skills. If you're not a designer, don't design. Don't do the things that you're not good at. Stick to what you're good at, and get other people to help you in the other areas. Derry Apple Allen Davison says it best. There's two problems in a business, simply two problems. You've either got a cash problem or you've got a talent problem. If you don't have any money, it's because you don't have the right people. And if you don't have the right people, it's because you don't have enough money. So do what you need to do to get out there and then bring the right people in and do what you need to do. I mean, I cannot tell you, Mark, who designed my workbook, he did that. I didn't pay him for that because I helped him on his website. So I helped give him the strategy and I helped go through and we JV'd together. So I gave him value, he gave me value. It was a win-win situation. Don't work for free out of scarcity. Don't go and say, oh, I'll do all of this for free with, you know, because you're, you're in scarcity. I was in a good place. I could have paid for this. I could have given him the money, but it worked out as a win-win. Do what you need to do, but always make sure, make sure you've got money in the bank. Like, trust me, I've owed money to people. There's still people I owe money to now. There's nothing worse than sitting there and saying, I want to do a Facebook Live, but oh my God, what if this person sees it because I owe them money? You know, and fortunately for me, that money's coming in now and I've got to a stage where I'm, I, I've made no, I've, I've not hidden my situation. The 50K debt, the 30K I've earned so far, just like pushing it out into the different places, like it takes time to do that. I'm still getting the money coming in, the money's going out. It's like, you know, I'm trying not to leave myself with nothing at the same time. Plus I'm reinvesting in my education I'm doing courses, I'm doing things to further me, to earn more. So you need, to, you need to consider it. When you're looking at your budget, you need to understand. What do you need to earn a month? Pay yourself first. What does your business need to bring in to give you that money? Then what do you need to add value? How much can you charge people? What are they willing to pay? Don't charge yourself out at a thousand pound an hour if no one's buying from you. It's fucking worthless. You know, all these people out there going, oh, this is valued at £2,000, but you can have it. Fuck off, it's not bad. You, you valued it at £2,000. If you value something at £2,000, that's not the fucking value of it. The value is whatever the marketplace tells you the value of it is. If you've sold something for £2,000, then yes, that's what it's worth. But if you're just saying it's worth £2,000, it's bollocks. I'm sorry, it's not. The, the, the value of something is determined by the marketplace, not by you. So don't go telling people, oh, it's worth this and I'm selling it for that because that is not true. Whatever people are paying for it 
You know, my value on my time is £250 an hour. The reason I say that is because people pay it. And because people pay it, that is my value on my time. That's what I value at. That's what other people value it at. That's why I can do what I do. My book, I value this book at much fucking more than £5. But I sell it at £5 because it's a no-brainer. It's obvious and I want people to get started. And then people can get all the information they need from me. You see, I struggled with budget for a long time. I struggled to put worth on myself. And so I had to productize myself as a way of saying, you know what, if you can't afford to work with me, I really want to help you get my book instead. You know, it's just a way of me being able to overcome my own challenges. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is what is your online identity? I know far too many people, I'm not going to go too deep in this, I know far too many people who are sitting there saying, right, I need to be on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and Pinterest and Facebook and LinkedIn. And no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need to be on everything. You can't be on everything. If I'm on Facebook and I see someone update something from Hootsuite or Buffer, I don't bother replying because you've automated a message and you're not going to be there to respond to it. When I, when, I, when I update my Facebook status, I update my Facebook status. When I send you an email in my database, I send you an email into my database. When I'm talking to people and interacting, I'm doing it. It's me. I do it myself. You look at Gary Vaynerchuk. He's a perfect example. He responds. He doesn't have a social media team working for him. He has people working for him, but he does it himself. He is responsible for his own stuff because it's his connection that people want. And so people are going to buy from you, not from what you're selling. People want the product. They want the service, but they want to know, like, and trust you. And you can't do that through automated systems. Right, you can help get yourself out there, but there's a point when people want to connect with you and they need to be able to connect with you. And if you're putting yourself on a pedestal, being far too unavailable for people, then there's going to, be, there's going to come a point. There's going to come a point where people are just going to be like, do you know what, I, just, I don't feel this person. Yeah, their stuff's good and I'm getting value from them, but I don't feel them. And so this comes back to the question of why are you doing what you're doing? If you're doing it just to earn money, then you'll get to that point. All right, you'll, you'll do well, you'll earn money, and there are people out there that earn money, but you'll get to a point where you will not, feel for, you will not be fulfilled. You will not feel good about what you're doing because there'll be no connection. All right? We're human beings, we need connection. So this comes all the way back full circle to why are you doing, what is your purpose, what are your values, what problems are you solving, why are you doing it, who, who are you and why are you doing it. Look, I hope that's helped. I know I've gone over, I was only going to do 10, 15 minutes, and like, whoa, sorry. Turn the camera around for absolutely no reason at all. Um, 30 minutes, right? I'm, um, I'm well overexposed. I hope that helps. Obviously talking about strategy today. I'm going to continue this for the rest of the week. I'm just going to bang on about this all week. Every day, midday, strategy, strategy, strategy. If there is anything you want me to talk about, if you have any questions at all around strategy, post me a message in the comments below. If anybody needs to hear this, Tag them. Let them know about it. Please share, like. I would really, really appreciate it. Anything you can do to help me, I'm very grateful. I want to get my message out there, but I also want to do it because I want to help people. So if you know people that need to hear about this, and if you have any questions around strategy, anything specific, we can go as deep with this as you like. If there's an area you want to focus on, let me know, and then we will dedicate a day this week to that. All right, you have me. We're going to do 30 minutes. 30 minutes, I'm going to limit it to 30 minutes a day, midday to half past 12, 30 minutes on strategy all week, this week. Anything you need, let me know. I'm Steve Woody. This is Online Mastery. This will be Midday Mastery. Have an amazing day. And I'll speak to you later. Take care. Goodbye.